Hello, hello, hello. We are back for uh, our seven o'clock tea session. I'm excited to have um, with me Pedro Villalon of O5T. Of course, we're joined by my co-host Ryan Moen, the co-director of the Tea Festival Revival here in Victoria. 2021 being held online. So thank you for everybody who's tuning in. Um, if you're just watching us now, don't worry. Um, afterward, you can always go to YouTube. There's some uh, going to be some archive sessions on there. You can go check out and watch some of the great sessions we had with uh, Requiem Naturals and with Mimi Chu live from China. We had um, folks live from Japan from Obubu Tea Farm. We had uh, some Vancouver sessions already um, with Tikan. It's been quite a fascinating session already. Um, really uh, looking forward to to this session today with Pedro. Um, Pedro, um, are you there? Yep, right here, man. Awesome. All right, so I'm going to bring you up onto the, and then uh, Ryan as well. So of course I'm here. Of course you're here. <laughs> I remember to turn my microphone on so I actually show up for everybody. Uh, there online. you go. Okay, awesome, cool. So um, I'm going to transition over. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, everybody. Um, so we're we're we have. Uh, a session today with Pedro, we're going to be talking about the alternative ways of expressing tea leaves. But um, I just wanted to say that um, O5T again, uh, we've had, we're so blessed to have such um, longevity with the people that we're working with. Like I know Pedro from back before this was a revival, right? Before we were even, you were like tea fest, like Victoria tea fest before the Victoria tea fest revival. Like how, how long, how long we know on each other, man? Like I feel like it's been at least 10 years, but maybe I'm wrong. That was uh, 11 years. 11 years yeah so, so it, it before there was a revival before the tea festival died right and it needed to be revived yes that was there was i think i met you at the victoria tea festival the right, original rendition right right right, right? right. Yeah. As, as suggested by our mutual friend uh, matt from matcha's blog yeah 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 you still <laughs> keep up you guys keep should drink some matcha guy? and yeah yeah he's, he's doing fine he's in uh, regina in saskatchewan he's a uh, He's practicing some uh, Chinese medicine, and the guy's doing great. He's, uh, oh, that's he's a good exciting. guy. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, sweet. So 11 years, man. It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while, indeed. Um, and then uh, I guess you would have met Ryan at the original rendition, or sorry, the, the first year that we did the revival, which is now five years ago, if you can believe it. Um, exactly. Once it needed to be revived and, and you revived it, that's, that's when I met Ryan. Yeah. yeah, we got the we got the old electric charge on there, and now we're online. It, all it took was five years, right? <laughs> and a pandemic, right? Yeah, <laughs> just and a pandemic, and a pandemic. But here we are. Um, so um, I actually have some. I'm I've been really, really looking forward to this session. Um, I uh, I have my my horoku. It came horoku. in. Yeah, it came in from uh, from from fresh from Tokoname. Fresh from Tokoname. I have my little. This guy kind of going. Maybe I should turn it down to low. That's probably what I should do. Yeah. Um, so it's hot. Your Kodoku's right now sizzling. Yes. Is that bad? No, no, no. I think it's good. Okay. <laughs> I guess I guess it won't break. I think I've it's gonna be fine, man. Just one before. Um, we have. Oh, look at that. Um, we have some. Uh, hi, Pedro. Hi, Jared. Awesome. Sister Speak Music says hello. Um, hey. <laughs> and we have. Uh, the, the, the chat going strong. So anybody who wants to join the chat, please, uh, please do and uh, come and ask us questions. I think it'll be good times. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you want to take the floor here, Pedro, maybe talk to us a little bit about what you were thinking of uh, discussing. Of discussing? Yeah. So I, I, I plan to make it a, uh, as they usually are with, with us, um, an interactive session. Awesome. And, uh, and some, some lovely we teams. may destroy a few things in the process yeah. or we may come up with something that's delicious in the process. But it needs who knows, happen. man? Yeah, we can, we, can, we can destroy. We can, we can destroy. There are, uh, I, I think it's just a reminder that in the end, it's, it's about just having fun with tea and appreciating it. And, and yes, there are many traditions which we should learn. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating learning about them. But many things are not just <coughs> cast in stone. There, there's a way to appreciate these sometimes by just, just playing with it. And in the worst case, you will destroy it, and then you learn about it, and you never do that again. Or you do it over um, and over and over again. Or you do it over and over and, 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 and you discover something interesting. Right. So, so um, for the audience, thanks to, thanks to uh, Jared San and a mutual acquaintance in Japan, uh, we were able to source more of these very cool gadgets which are um, a tea roaster and uh, let us start by by uh just 
reviving something. So just like the Victoria Tea Festival is being revived right now, yeah. um, oftentimes we lose like little bags of tea here and there, and they are past their prime. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. potentially there's something that that we could do with those guys. So I heard Jared that you had some some tea, uh, some sencha that had been left open. Yeah, I have uh, I have some uh, side eye fukamushi from Kirishima that was very tasty back in 2018 when this was harvested. Right, and uh, it was lost in the back end of our refrigerator. So it's a uh, a couple of years down the road now. Um, it doesn't look as as vibrant as as um, as it did back in the day. It's yeah, much yeah. duller leaves, and I would suggest two things. Uh, I, you, you have um, an electric um, grid over there. I have, uh, I have gas. Gas is better, right? It's got to be better. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. Who knows, man? Yours is already hot. So I will heat this up, and I would suggest, why don't we try um, tasting some uh, past, past its prime um, sencha? First. And right? let's mm -hmm. do two things. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's try just heating some a little bit. Just yeah. to, to to probably reduce the moisture and and bring back the aroma. Okay. Um, in the best case scenario, this will taste delicious. In the worst case scenario, you know the the whole room will smell delicious because it's like incense. Right. But maybe and it won't taste good in the cup. What, 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 so I put mine on minimum here, but I don't think that my I think my little guy here is uh, starting to 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 not smoke quite, but it does look like it doesn't like to go on. On, um, it doesn't like minimum. I, I think if it I remember like correctly, minimum. this thing is like on or off. Like it's gotten to that point in its lifespan where it doesn't want to play games anymore. It doesn't. It doesn't believe in things like minimum or medium. You know, when stovetops get to that that point in their in their life. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, very yeah. No, I I I I hear your stovetop, man. Yeah. Why, why don't you put it at maximum oh, and then well, just? Well, that's what I'm saying. Just, I think it's that's where it is. Right. Yeah. Blast it. Yeah. And then um <laughs> then just just try. It. I'm not gonna. Can okay. you see my, my, my Horoku here? Let's uh, focus on oh, amazing. important stuff. So if you're watching exactly. from home, and if you're Ryan, and if you were near a stove, and you had parchment paper, that you could kind of figure this out. Um, so I'm, uh, where you put some on, and you can sort of reawaken it. I have actually some, some oolong from, from Shikoku that's quite interesting. You know what? I, 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 I just did what I didn't want to do. So I, I was trying to give this a, a very light zap, but uh, this Horoku is... Uh, it's pretty aggressive and it was very hot. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting to the point where I am officially making this hojicha. And you can see the, can you guys see the smoke coming out of this? Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. So officially I am making hojicha. This is starting to look, uh, so th there, there are some, some stems, some cookie in this tea. Okay. And uh, they're starting to look golden. The rest of my tea starts looking brown as in hojicha. So officially i am making hojicha and then I'll, I'll tell you guys what it what it tastes Ooh, like it um, smells so good i know it's it's hoji, man i am going to turn off my fire oh. now I and think, uh, i think uh, like two I seconds I, I think that's done like that is so done yeah well right, look, I think look I, at this guy that's officially oh. hojicha color now it's not black or anything i am going to remove it quickly because the horoku is still very hot and uh, this will cool it down I ruined but mine. But this is no longer sencha. I now have a hojicha. Hmm. Um, yeah. You see this guy? A little bit higher, Pedro. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you can see the cookie over there. Cookie became golden. The other things just became uh, brown. Uh, luckily, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing black. No charcoal here yet. Right. So that that should be good. Now. Um, just just a, just a quick segue in, in the conversation. Um, now that you have all these horuku over in um, in Victoria, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, have you tried have you ever tried making buku bucha like the the Okinawa style um, Okinawa style tea ceremony? I have not. No. So Okinawa like... style tea ceremony is made with uh, with rice. You you boil rice and yeah. you use that to make a froth. Okay. Uh, and we can talk more about that later some other time. But before I forget, this horuku I find is a really cool tool for you to roast the rice and then make a uh, buku buku cha. 
that's kind of cool. Or one could make their own kind of genmaicha, hey? Like you could. Exactly. Yeah. You make your own genmai because you have to use genmai. Right. And, and you can ro use this to roast the rice and just pop it lightly. And then okay. you can make your own genmai. I'm into this. I'm into this. Okay. So I've, I've taken really um, forgiving sencha from, from Fukuoka on my end. This is from, yep. a, from a farmer in, um, uh, like, uh, I, um, I basically, he's, um, he's doing a deeply steamed selection. This is his aracha, so it's not, okay. it's not really a sencha, but it had a chance to not, I mean, it, it's, it's not very good because I kept the package open for too long. It was delicious when good. I got it, and I figured this was a good candidate. Ryan, I, yeah. ga I gave you some um some of this selection um yeah i'm all kitted up i got three I was yeah. what, do, what am i looking this for guy, yeah. right so so you're looking right, for right. get a skillet man if, if, if you can just find a skillet in your kitchen that should work i think clay is better than than cast iron but cast iron will do and he's just just heat up the i think i called it sencha and it was for 7 p.m and it was in the, one of those little jars so this, I thought it was Sencha. It's actually Aracha. I just didn't have a name on it. All right. Let's see, I okay. think this is ready, man. I'll do that. I'll get the camera set up. But if I catch anything on fire. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. We don't want to. Then we'll blame uh, Pedro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll blame Pedro. That's right. It'll be fine, man. My, mine did start smoking. But but look at so this now. Mine. And it's yeah. uh, look at, that, look at the wow. color of this thing. It took me, what, all of uh, 45 wow. seconds to roast it. And now it's it's golden. Wow. I kind of want to do a hojicha with mine now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I was not planning to do koji chat, but it just uh, started smoking. So mine smelled really good, chat. and then it started to not smell so good. Um, oh, this one's still good, man. Let me see. I'll I'll try I'll try two things. I'll try just this, and then I will ice some. Okay, okay. I'm gonna see what happens. So did did Jared succeed? And uh, m more more on this. Mine is uh, it, it's also. Uh, it's also aracha, so so I can um, I can still see a decent amount of cookie in my in my mix. Mine tastes like hojicha, even though it looks like sencha. All right, my Pedro, we're gonna do the ultimate home cook. We got a steel fry pan, awesome. Dude. We got a nonstick, mm -hmm. yeah, and then we have a a big old cast iron. Oh, uh, cast iron, cast iron, brother. Yeah. I, I think cast iron is good. Yeah, let's go with cast iron. Let's go cast iron and, and make it very, very hot. Well, make sure it's clean and doesn't taste like bacon. Any, or if it tastes like bacon, maybe it is good. It's, it's a new kind of tea. You'll be like... Exactly. It'll be like a... A proper pie. familiar yeah. sentence. It's le, le, le pork. Le pork. Mm. Well, if Mimi puts peanuts in her tea, why not some bacon? Mm. You know? There's no bacon. <laughs> there is no bacon. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> there, is, there is no spoon. Fair enough. You know, um, mine, mine I, I'm, I'm pretty surprised. I, I was not expecting to make hoji, but look look at this guy. I, I made hoji in a very, very short amount of time. Yeah. And it's actually a very enjoyable hoji that came from a very, very dull sencha, which I just, and I should probably also show you guys the sencha. It was not, I think over two years, my refrigerator was not the best home for this sencha. Right. Mine was open for a year, so. Yeah, it's not good. Look. It, it came from being this dull greenish thing right? Uh, to making this pretty cool golden beverage, which I think uh, guys would also make a, yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's dull. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> um, couple of notes. I find that, uh, that these senchas become hoji much faster than bancha and then, um, then kamaidicha. Which makes sense, right? There's such like, the particles, yeah. right? And they're also the young, yeah. delicate leaves, and all of the above. Well, right? kamaidi could also be young, delicate leaves, I guess. Right, right, right. right. Sorry, I, 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 I feel like when they're done making a kamaidi cha, it's a little bit more dense for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's the type of leaves they're using, but I feel like, I don't know. Maybe it's all in my head, man. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I've seen some very, very fine kamaidi cha leaves. Uh, although most of them actually do come from China, and I find that the pick of leaves for kamaidi cha in Japan tends to be a bit larger. Right. Yeah, it so makes sense. That 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 could work. Um, anyway, the, the the message here is horuku is something really cool, really fun. Yeah. Sometimes when you have a team tea that is past its prime, you know, 
if, if you burn it, it's not the end of the world, but if you rescue it, it it's always really cool bringing back one of these old friends and that feel, can be made into something quite enjoyable. I feel like and I want to brown this. Just it, Go for it. I, I was not going to brown this, but but look at this. It's just, just beautiful. Yeah, right? That looks really nice. I like. I'll be honest, this smells so good after about two seconds. I bet you that mm -hmm. that's all this needs in a hot horoku is about two seconds and it would be like back to tasting amazing. Yeah, absolutely. You it know? is It is a couple of seconds. You know, this almost all... smells like pancakes. <laughs> this, this reminds me of like um, when I'm uh, making... Um... Oh, wow, that smells so good. Um, when, when, when the tea comes fresh from Japan, uh, yeah, you know, you first open the bag and it has that like they've just finished fired it and it has that beautiful aromatic and and yeah. there's there's nothing like it, you know. No, 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 it's it's actually really good. And on 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 that note, Jared, so so since we got those twin grinders, yeah, for micro milling matcha, yeah, 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 uh, I've been really enjoying uh, firing the teas just lightly before grinding them, and it yeah. doesn't have to be with every single tea, but. But I've tried milling some some crimsons and and some oolongs, and just just give him a light firing before milling. Yeah, I really want to geek out on that, eh? Like I'm getting a little mini roaster, and I want to do like a roast curve, like track how hot and how long and all that stuff, and really get an understanding of that finished firing process. You do need something more than a uh, little hodoku. You do need something a bit more professional. Yeah, but this is so interesting for playing with, right? And just getting an understanding of what heat does to flavor. That's cool. Well, I, I, I like a uh, cast iron. <laughs> cast, iron is, cast iron is good, man. It, 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 it totally works. Yeah, this is cool. Okay, so you... It totally works. Um, the, these Kodoku, by the way, are, uh, I find, a really cool companion when you're, when you're camping. Oh, just being yeah. by a bonfire and roasting tea leaves is always something fun. That is so cool. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah, I grabbed another one so that I had one for sale, but I wasn't sure if they were going to be a good size or a good, you know, but these are nice, eh? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all okay. thanks to Okuma-san and, and, uh, yeah. and, and Watanabe-san who first introduced me to these Horukus, but they are a very, very decent size. Um, they also work, should you, should any of you guys also be coffee geeks, mm -hmm. my favorite coffee bar in Kyoto has just some 75 year old barista who roasts green beans in these things and he doesn't degas them or anything and tell you the truth, it, ha it was not the best cup of coffee I've ever had, but it's one of the best coffee experiences I've had. Where he just, just roasted just it in front of you. Freshly roasted coffee in a horuku and, and then milled and then, um, made into, um, in um in a siphon okay so i, I, I went to, batch. i went to um fukuoka and yeah. stopped by a tea shop that that um with uh takaki he took us there yep and they did a full course like experience and they started you with like like a cold brew and then they went into like a hardcore gyokuro and the, they ended the session with a horoku fired hojicha that they yeah. fired right before you drank it and it was oh my that's cool eh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you, you were saying, okay. what's up? No, no, it's good, man. It's all good. I am just trying a second batch. So I, I made one where I went all the way to browning it, and there was a lot of smoke coming out of my, um, coming out of my horoku. And now I'm making another one, which is just lightly roasted. Right. And I shall report. So I was very happy with my first one. I shall report if I'm happy with the second one, too. Okay. Or it's a disaster. Ah. Uh. Oh, look at that. Every guest has been a gem. Uh, we have somebody sp speaking. I think this might th be through the YouTube because I'm not seeing it on the Twitch chat. But uh, somebody nice. says that they uh, tried to go to our uh, festivals before. Um, or they said they, they did. I can't quite see. And then um, when, when they, uh, they said they've been tuning in from the beginning and that every guest has been a gem. So, so thank you. That's, been re that's really sweet. I wonder who, who said that. Pedro, I have a question. Because we're introducing heat via the uh, the process, does it need less of a steep time because the volatility is being introduced? Does it need less of a steep time? Um, How long are you I steeping for? Oh, there he is. Jo so Joanne here's, Calvitas. here's something. I, I don't necessarily steep. think it will require a shorter steeping time. Um, I am steeping this tea with the water at a higher temperature. Mm. 
And one thing that I find, not not with um, not with a Japanese hodoku, but with something a bit more similar to, to what you have at home, Ryan, um, which happened in, in Yunnan, is that when you roast certain teas, you make them much more, um, let's say, lenient. So, poor tea, as, as, as you know, if, if you get some, some young poor and you oversteep it, it can be very bitter. But if you fire it, if, if you make it into hoji cha poor and then you boil it, it actually tastes delicious and, 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 and you can boil it. So that, that would definitely be a, a longer steeping time um, with a very high temperature, yet you get a very pleasant drink. Huh. You know, I was... So, sorry, keep going. <laughs> My bad. No, I, th I, th I think that, that um, you know, not necessarily the, the, the steeping time will be shorter. So I have, I have two examples now. Okay. I have this one, which was roasted very unscientifically all the way to, to making it hoji. Yeah. This one, which was just lightly roasted, and as you can see, it's, it's yellowish. So it's definitely not, 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 not uh, yeah, that's sencha. Similar, that's similar to this one, eh? That's my lightly roasted sencha. <laughs> that's lightly roasted. I, I think yours is the lightest. This is the medium guy, and then so I have true. some some total hojicha. I'm trying to get uh, there with mine. Yeah. Yeah. In 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 this part, it took me 45 seconds to get it to full hojicha. In this case, I like I like full hojicha much more than my medium roasted sencha. Interesting. Okay. Medium it's... roasted sencha is drinkable. Yeah. And and Ryan, I did 80 degrees Celsius and I steeped for about 40 seconds. I've been showing these off all day, Pedro. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Yeah, it's good, man. <laughs> it's like tokoname awesomeness. Okay. Um, it is. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> tokoname awesomeness. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, thanks to uh, Takaki for, for hooking us up. It's, uh, it's amazing getting so many really cool teapots. Isn't it, though? Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> rad. Um, I, um, I wanted to say that... Um, oh, where was I going with this? So, um, Remember that guy um, I was telling you about who's from the corner region in Wuyi, um, David? And I was like, this guy is this amazing uh, black matter scientist. Yeah, 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 I remember that guy. Yeah, he would often talk about um, the benefits of of just like um, the benefits of 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 firing again, and just like how much of an artesian process that is. Of course, in Wuyi Mountain, right? Like the whole charcoal roasting and all that fun stuff. So, but yeah, yeah. but also that like you can really taste the tea um, after you've sort of washed away the roast a bit. It'd be really interesting to like make these teas and like see what we get out of them if we you know brew them a few times and we'll, we'll get a sense of how like amateur our roasts are compared to <laughs> people who really know what they're doing and they're doing a good job compared but to people who <laughs> really know what they're doing yeah, yeah no I, I i totally agree it'll be really fun hey like i think that'd be really cool so um I'm, having said that man i i think that we're also talking about a different kind of um of roasting process because of course you know the, the roasting the the basket roasting process of, of Wuyi San, or at least uh, when, when I've seen it, is, is something that takes takes much longer and it often uses charcoal as a, as a fuel, which will of course have a different effect. Right. And uh, in this case, I have a gas canister from Home Hardware and a Japanese Horuku and pretty much like 45 seconds of roasting this. So, so it's, it's the hillbilly cousin of um, of professional roasters in Wuyi San. Exactly. So I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of hill. Japanese <laughs> dishware, you know, Billy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How's, how, how's your skillet process going, Ryan? Uh, I took it out of the skillet because the smoke got uh, pronounced enough and I felt like the, the tea was, it was starting to become aromatic, which I think was our goal. Yeah. Um, I have it ready for water. I'm getting the, the kettle boiling. And yeah. then I'm about to thank you, I think. I think this has been fun. <laughs> yeah, this has been, re this has been really cool. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this. Um, I, I, I think that I, when I smelled this tea, when I was about to go drink it, I smelled it and I was like, this tea like smells really old and grassy and there's no way that I'm going to sit down and actually enjoy this. But when I got it initially, it was awesome. Like it was a really good yeah. tea. And I was kind of kicking myself for not sealing the bag. Right? Yeah, totally, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really bad when you have some delicious tea and it just doesn't doesn't uh, stay great. I just rediscovered a, a 2013 matcha from um, 
from one of my friends back in UG. Yeah. And it's it was sad because it was definitely not it was not terrible, but it was not delicious as it was a few years ago. Right. Right. Bit yeah. of a waste. Yeah. I don't know how to rescue matcha yet, but but uh, apparently there is a way to rescue sencha and you could probably rescue tencha but not matcha yeah you can and and who knows man maybe maybe there is a way to rescue matcha i just don't know it but you wouldn't it be interesting to take tencha and like cook it this way until it becomes a hojicha and then like mill that and make like a like a matcha hojicha you know who's done it suji san suji san Su suji gave me yeah he, he and 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 uh you know, you, i don't you, speak you, enough japanese you hear about hojicha yeah. being milled but like to no, 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 dude. He's 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 milling high quality tencha into into uh, hojicha and then grinding it into into matcha. Yeah. It's the finest freaking matcha I've ever tried. Uh -huh. I didn't even ask the price. He told me it was not cheap, and it probably is not cheap. Right. But uh, it's really interesting. He he yeah, was using cool. like like competition grade freaking tencha to make uh, hojicha. It'd be really interesting to like take that and be like, hey, you know, I want to have a oh, look at that color. That's really interesting. Oh, it's all like broken up. Like, can you see that? Okay. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah. That, that that's golden also. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it'd be interesting to like take tencha leaves and 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 I wonder if you could do like a um like a like different variations of playing around with with them so that you get. Uh, I wonder if you could make an oolong tencha. Wouldn't that be interesting? Like I don't know somehow. I don't know. Figure out like I, I, maybe purposefully process it a little bit later, past the time that you're supposed to. Or I, I guess you can. So one of the things that we're looking forward on on 2021, if if and when we can travel abroad and go to Japan again, mm -hmm. learning about how matcha used to be consumed back in back in the Edo period, before ice boxes, before all our modern technology that enables us to have these super green, very vibrant, bright sencha. Right. Or or you know, tencha, because back then you had to have all these people in the mountains. And by the time they got to wherever they were going to process the leaves, it would have to oxidize a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. They wouldn't have been having air conditioned trucks and like bringing things over. But you know what I'm noticing too, is that like we went to, we did that hand harvesting um, experience in, in, in Mandokoro, right? Like this really old community. Yeah. And they're one of the last in the country that are like committed to hand picking. Like everything that's harvested in that village is hand picked, and yeah. And they're also committed to. They've tried to bring in some clonal cultivars and grow them there, but the snow just destroys them. And um, oh, man. and so they can only grow zaidaishu, the heirloom cultivars, and and that's because w they'll get two meters of snow. It'll crush the leaves, and then when the snow melts, it'll spring back up, and they'll be able mm -hmm. to produce some. Into but like. Those tea, when I make those 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 um, teas that we get from there, I, I can't make them the same way as I do other teas. You know, like I, I have to give them more time. Um, so most senchas I find are they're permeable enough after production that if you go past like a minute fifteen, like if you go into a minute thirty, you start to bring out some pretty harsh flavor dynamics. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But um, it'd be interesting to make like a tencha from like a, a seed cultivar like uh like something seeded like that like a zairaishu or something because you might get more like um forgiveness out of it it wouldn't be so fragile and then when you did let it yeah. wither a little bit and then you took that and you you took it to a tensha factory wouldn't that be interesting like to it would yeah it would totally and, and also you know so so whenever we make tensha or, or, or people make tensha yeah they're using tea that grows in rows and, and you have well it has to grow in very ordered rows because you have a canopy that's going to shade it and yeah. you know all, all these desirable aspects out of gyokuro and, and tencha are achieved precisely by having a, a little piece of, of of cultivated land that is very very ordered mm -hmm. so what would happen if you make tencha out of trees that grow wild um, in a cedar forest like like the ones in gifu right Right, right, exactly. Like you have been talking about for a while. Right, right. I, it's I, shade I, grown because there's a canopy. There's there's a bunch of cedar trees that are covering those guys. Mm -hmm. But you would think that the plant would be different because there's a there's a tea plant and there are no more tea plants around it. There, there's there's a forest, but you know this tea plant has at least you know uh, uh, one meter or two meters around it to suck uh, nutrients out of the soil. Right. Whereas a tea plant that grows in a 
in a farm has a bunch of, of fellow tea plants around it. Right. Yeah. No, that's interesting. And so, yeah. you, you know, but it seems also very like challenging. Like, um, I don't know, when we, we did that hand harvesting, they, they do a different style. They're not doing the two leaves in a bud. They're stripping. Like that's what Absolutely. Mando Koro does. Yeah, they yeah, they totally. like strip. It's yeah. like, wow, that's intense. You know, like from like a hand pick, like there's a specific way to do it perspective. It was a really aggressive way of harvesting. Right, right, right. No, 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 your traditional Oba Chan with uh, very trained fingers. And oh, yeah, it was intense, right? But uh, right? They, they were like, the Oba Chan's there, like, they're so fast. But even really fast, it took them a week for three people to harvest 100 kilograms of finished product, right? Dude, uh, and they're quick. Finished. It was unfinished product, so 100 kilograms. And, and it was like, to finish that, they only got 20 kilograms at the end. And, oh, man, yeah, yeah. you know, like you think about that, just how much. You're still quick, man. Yeah. You, you and I would not get 100 kilograms. No, we wouldn't. Yeah, we'd probably get No, we'd, we'd be at 50 kilograms and, and, and those <laughs> grannies would already be having dinner and oh, watching yeah. us. Yeah, they'd be laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> so Slow yeah, foreigners with their slow hands. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How's it going, Ryan? Is, 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 is your tea any, any good? It tasted nutty. It was really delicious. I, was just, I actually, that was fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm probably the guiltiest for for forgetting tea because I'm like, oh, I'll go, I'll do a tea festival, I'll be gifted tea, and then I'll just be like, that was beautiful. Oh. Yeah, and yeah. then I can't tell anybody, including Jared, that I did such a sacrilegious thing, like let my tea go to waste. But this is fun. I'll do this again. It it works, eh? It totally works. Awesome. I'm glad it, that that skillet is a huruku now. You know, uh, it is. Uh, we have a quote. Uh, we have a, uh, somebody says, uh, Hillbilly cousin of professional roasters is going to be the official quote for Pedro Villalon of 2020, says T.A.J. <laughs> in the chat room. So you, yeah, you are that, now that, you are now a quoted individual. You will uh, you'll be written down yeah. in history for 2020. It's, yeah, fair enough. It's, it's going to be enough. good. Good, 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 good. Um, it's a hillbilly cousin. It's interesting um, that Ryan's able to prove that there's some enjoyment in just doing busting out the uh, the good old, uh, the good old uh, skillet and, 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 and frying up some tea. Hey, like that's that's good times. I've I've always like I've 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 hesitated. I'm like I think I want to try that, but I just I feel like the garlic and olive oil that's likely there is just gonna, you know. But if I'm gonna throw it out anyway, then what's the harm, right? Like right. And you know what? No, if you know, if, if if you wash a skillet properly, you can you can pretty much reduce. You know, whatever kind of pollutants could be there, I think so. Yeah, and mine's pretty much literally just a pancake pan. Like it's, it tastes great. Cool. Okay. You awesome. know, pancakes and tea are good. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can, I can see those two going together. Um, that could that, very well work. I really like. So, uh, how, how, how are we doing for time, guys? We, we have, uh, we're at thirty-four, man. We have eleven minutes left with you before we go to the other session. Did you, did you want to do one of these other teas? You gave us quite a few. Yeah. Um, we well, some of them for you to drink. All, all the wazuka, all the wazuka teas are for uh, for the next session with uh, with Haruka, yeah. Haruka Horisan, and uh, maybe 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 let's do something else that's kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, I I know you guys have some kind of pour over device over there. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Ryan, I'm not. You, you could kind of figure something. Do you have a sieve, Ryan? Uh, I have one without a handle, so. Maybe. That might be perfect. I, know, I always, I always want to like be like, oh, it's an observer sport, and then I end up like in the kitchen with the skillet. So. <laughs> the skillet, that's a dude, exactly. Yeah, it's not an observer sport. Yeah, you, you, okay, you, you I'll, done, man. I'll go grab the sieve. Yeah, because then you can do a pour over. Yeah, it's gonna be seat, amazing. Gra gra grabbing the filter, grab a coffee filter or a dirty stocking or whatever. Dirty stocking. Just, uh, yeah, we can make. Well, we, we, can need, make we need to filter through a dirty something. stocking. But maybe not dirty. Maybe maybe a clean stocking. A clean stocking. I think you're asking a lot. I am, yeah. dude. Yeah, um, uh, I am going to be using this um, this Japanese ceramic filter. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so in the same spirit of, of rescuing these, and yeah. let's let's do supernova, please. Let's uh, there, there's one that's called supernova in the east. Let's do supernova. Should I do my super uh, fine sieve? Should I do that, or should I do? Yeah. Or should I do a coffee filter like a cone? What are you thinking? So I, I got some options What, what here, do you man. think would, would uh, give it the least amount of flavor? What, what would be the least intrusive? Like, this is like, uh, this can work. It's, it's kind of like a... There you go, man. Right? Yeah, th think, this is I, what I, I normally I, I, use for when I do pour over tea. Let's, let's do that guy. Which one? 
The, 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 what, what do you usually use for pour over tea? This guy, the super fine sieve. This is meant for catching plankton. Yeah. <laughs> well, super fine sieve for supernova tea. Yeah. Insert of a cheap uh, teapot. Okay. Your, your microphone's out of the, your, your mouth there, man. Oh, it was up in my hair. There you I was go. Just trying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is from a cheap uh, teapot. Yeah. It's just an insert, so we're going to go with this. Amazing. Work, man. Yeah, that's great. Totally. Yeah. And we're going to use Time Traveler. So, so I. Uh, Pedro, no, no, I, I, um, I think let, let's use Supernova, please. Oh, that's what you said. Yeah, that's what you said. Time Traveler. It, it could also work, but let's, let, let, let's use Supernova because I think uh, the, the point that I want to make here is a little bit different. Okay, Supernova. Well, how many grams am I going to put on? Am I weighing it or am I just eyeballing this? Well, depends. Um, yeah, let's, how many, how many uh, grams of water are you going to use? That's a great question. How many how, grams how of water your, do um, you How big is your pot over there? Why, why um, don't we do a, a, a I have, 200 I have a, I have a 12 milliliter? Ounce, I have a 12 ounce. Uh, and let, let, let's not fill it up. Let's wait, and, and you've got a scale. So I, I would suggest let's do 200 milliliters okay. and let us do three grams, please. Okay, I'm just going to unplug this. Uh, I don't want to. Mostly because I have three grams weight over here. Now, um, my fear. On, on the same spirit of rescuing tea, yeah. these are the dregs of this tea. So this is what was left at the bottom of the of, of the bag. How many grams? So, again, so uh, do three, three grams, please. Okay. Okay. This is 50% uh, Benny Fuki, 50% Benny Hikari. Oh, cool. And I've never heard of yeah. Benny Hikari. That's cool. Benny Hikari, man. Uh, so, so, so they're a bit stronger, slightly more tannic um, cultivars. This is Kocha. Uh, it is Kocha. Yeah. In, in Jagasil Keys, it's Crimson Tea. Nice. Wait, is that Jaga Silk Ease? I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to like reframe the conversation, but I think it's a it's a it's a it's an exercise in futility. Um, in futility. <laughs> um, that's okay though. Um, so I'm doing how just a pour over? Like what temperature you want this at? Yeah, three grams, and 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 I would say boiling, boiling? because okay. we can. can so what what I find is that when 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 you're doing um when you're doing this kind of tea. If you're using one of these goosenecks, there's enough um, loss of uh, temperature yeah. when you're pouring it into the, the, the tea. Yeah. Um, so, so my tea is very, very broken. It's uh, like the, the guy, the one I gave you to you guys, it's in slightly better shape. Yeah. But uh, in my case, it's just what was left at the bottom of the bag. So it's a bunch of, you know, powdery particles. Right. And sometimes when you have your, your regular teapot, it is a bit more complicated using these last little bits. Um, I find that this system with my um, Japanese stone filter, mm -hmm. or in your case, a super fine sieve, which will also work, mm -hmm. is a good system to rescue those last, uh, last little bits and, and, and bring a lot of enjoyment out of them. You know, I have, I have a whole series of teas um, for my wholesale customers. I call it my fast bar. And the whole concept yeah. is around this idea. I, put, I give them these super fine sieves, and they do a pour over and it's like 30 seconds. And I just kind of like encourage them to dose like between three and six grams, depending on the tea. And, yeah. and it's, it's so much faster than, you know, it's also interesting how a lot of these teas that work this way for whatever reason seem to be a little bit more forgiving. Like there, there's less, um, I don't know. It's just like, I don't get as much like unpleasantness, maybe because it's such a, a quick, uh, yeah, I don't know. They sometimes know are. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we, I, yeah. Keep going. Sorry. Yes. I, I find it pretty cool also for for uh, for pours when you have just the broken little pieces at the end of a cake. So you have these beautiful cake, and you know over the over the next few months you you try to break it really carefully and and come up with a larger leaves. But in the end, once you finish your cake, there's a bunch of uh, of smaller broken particles in in your in your paper. Mm. And I find that a Japanese strainer is a is a pretty cool way to to enjoy and extract those those last little few pieces i'm drinking my no it's not wrong. traditional it's not an itching pot or yeah it. definitely not but i find it enjoyable right that makes sense yeah i think it's brilliant too because for somebody like me who's always looking at the tea timer it's like it's not it's when it's measured up and you know it's good it's like it's done what are, yeah, it works. It works. Um, what are it's, we, are it's we done. Are we doing a 240 grams or 180 grams or what's my goal? You know, I, 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 I was I was thinking about 200 grams of water of water, okay. but I can do that. I can do that. I can. And, and Whatever, I'm, man. Should I um, 
My goal Supernova is Supernova to... is pretty pretty strong. This, this is made by by a, a very cool gentleman called Konomi-san. Okay. And uh, Konomi-san belongs to the family that opened the first tea business in um, in Kyushu Island ever. Oh wow, that's kind of cool. So they uh, they they go way back in history. They were also some of the really cool guys that decided that you should bring uh, production techniques from from Kyoto into uh, into Fukuoka. And uh, and hence we can enjoy yame yame gyokuro and and yame matcha, nice, because and, these guys had the clever idea of, of bringing that's awesome tea production techniques from from Kyoto. And so yame is mine. like I think they got the f like top forty. I can't remember. It's insane how many yame places keep winning best in in in, in Japan for the yeah, yeah, they do a really good job. Yeah. But but apparently in, in um. In, in the Meiji period, they were making mostly kamairi cha, and then they switched to, to also making some some other kind of uh, steamed teas. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Fairly yeah. recent. I also happen to love gam kamairi cha, but okay. Well, there we go. That smells really good. Yeah. It smells like honey. I think it's amazing that it captures the full flavor with just the pour over. Yeah, it captures the full flavor with with a very very short uh, steep. Yeah, that's really um, interesting. This method is also good, in my opinion, for cask aged teas because it brings out um, a lot of the potentially more volatile flavors of that the tea um, gets while while being aged in a in a cask. This is really yeah. Oh, hold on one sec, Micah. Yeah. I got some tea for you, sir. <laughs> He's got to make sure that everybody else is caffeinated on the other side of the crew. And then I did the <laughs> kind of light. Of course, one is the you should caffeinate people. <laughs> It's a long day. The darkly roasted one is the more dark roast. Gradations of color, my friend. Just passing along the love. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. okay. Enjoy. Um, so, um, sorry, what did I miss? Nothing. We're just uh, talking about caffeinating the team. They talk about hojicha being um, decaffeinated. It, you're then my engineer friend, too. Um, is this is this logical? It just feels like so illogical to me, but it, it seems to be something they can prove. What, well, you know, I I've never really tested hojicha for caffeine content, so so I cannot state it like that. Okay. I do know empirically that whenever I have guests at the tea bar and they have hojicha, even if they're sensitive to caffeine, yeah, most of the times they can sleep quite okay. And I also know that a lot of um, young mothers in yeah. Japan give uh hoji cha and and more specifically hoji cookie cha to yeah. their kids I've, I've seen a bunch of them feeding that to the kids I've, I've experienced this this i half of it i wonder if it's my placebo of telling the person that they're not gonna but but you know i think there's something to it i have it at night and it doesn't seem to affect me i don't know yeah it's interesting oh, honestly i i don't know you know i I wonder if it we, would be uh, interesting because so when you, when you do hoji cha, you fire the tea at a higher temperature, of course. Yeah. But Mimi was just telling us that, that she's pan firing her Guizhou tea at 220 Celsius. Yeah. So it's pretty high. You would think yeah. that's also pretty high. You would think that would also decompose caffeine, yet it doesn't. Huh. So, Matt, you know the the answer to that is I don't know. I'm I I, I ignore uh, I declare my ignorance in the in, in the subject, but. Whoever drinks goji cha at my bar at night, most of the times, does not complain the next time they come here. That yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. You know, um, we're hitting. Uh, we're actually at 7:45 now, Pedro. Uh, I hate to. Right. Again, I always these sessions end so fast. Um, do you want to uh, have some last words for the audience? Uh, we, we have actually quite a number of viewers tuning in right now um, from around Amazing. the world. Uh, if you want to say some 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 parting words here for them. Nothing to add. Just my regards to all of those guys who are who are joining. Um, I hope they enjoy their tea and and the rest of the rest of the sessions. Thanks for uh, pulling everybody together, Jared and and, and Ryan. It's yeah, a do it's that a noble yeah. <laughs> it's a noble end endeavor. So thanks for doing it, guys. Thank you for being on the show, Pedro. We really uh, appreciated having you here. Um, Ryan, did you have any final words for Pedro before we say goodbye? Yeah. Well, I just want to thank Pedro for uh, well, Pedro's suggested that his was the the hillbilly apparatus but i think that he championed the skillet and i persevered and even did the pour over with uh pretty much everything you'll find at home and well being a canadian you'll always find a mason jar somewhere in your cupboard so uh yeah i feel co fully capable to salvage any tea that i 
accidentally neglect. So you become a savior and an angel, and I can't thank you enough. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, brother. Nice, nice. Very cool. Okay, so we have, uh, yeah, Alka Michael and Team Mistress and TAJ, everybody saying thank you, thank you, thank you across the board. So it was quite a, quite a, nice, uh, quite a nice session. Actually, now that I think about it, Pedro, you're going to be staying on. Um, we're going to take a short break here, but you're going to be staying on for the, uh, the session with... Wazuka the Festival. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, well then... Uh, Bye for now, uh, Pedro, and we will uh, we'll be uh, back on um, in, a, Talk to in, you in, in a little bit. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. And you want to take it away, Ryan? Well, yeah, exactly what Pedro said. The Wazuka Tea Festival is up next, so you can catch us in about 13 minutes. Uh, we'll be talking to them. And I was just seeing if we have, a, I think it's Haruki. Uh, Haruka. It's Haruka-san is going to be our, um, and friends. Yeah. Hori is going to take us through the, the festival. And I mean, if there's anything we know about festival, it's all about the friends, right? It's the many that make it happen. So if you can stay tuned for the next uh, 12-ish minutes, we'll be right back with you. Thank you. <laughs>